Welcome to Soledad in Acton, California. Today I'm going to take you on a hike in the hills to see the exterior of the set from MASH. Welcome back, Edel Campers. I'm Fred. And I'm Mary. We explore, experience, and educate. Because it's never too late to believe in yourself. And that's the truth. So here are the infamous tracks that go um, close to Soledad Canyon, Thousand Trails. You actually have to cross them to get to the Welcome Center and on to the park. So when you cross the railroad tracks, you are going to see all guests check in. You are going to turn right and... And those are the lanes you pull in with your RV and pull up to the Welcome Center and go inside and get all your goodies. To check in, they say you need your driver's license, vehicle registration, vehicle insurance, um, for all vehicles and RVs. However, when I went inside, they said if you register online that you don't need to bring those in. And um, hopefully it continues to be that way. Oh, look. So Saturday, we're not going to be here. They're going to have a craft, a movie, bingo, DJ dance. Ah, DJ dance. Is the DJ going to dance? I don't know, but I would, I hope. And here is the ranger station where you can put your coat in to get in. And it also shows you on a, a board all the activities for the week. It goes by them all. At the lodge, you will find a nice recreation room inside. It has like new furniture and cool pool tables. Really has a good atmosphere. Behind it is the pool and also the laundry room. So, you know, who wouldn't like doing laundry here? These washer and dryers are um, operated by a scan. So you can use your credit card. It is CSC, so you can get the Paymobile as well. But they do not use coins. Two weeks in hot tubbing land. You want me to get a hacksaw? No, it looks pretty nasty in there. Actually, a socket set would do it. But I have to say, I am pretty disappointed. We were at Thousand Trails in where? Um, Rancho Oso. Rancho Oso. Every night we were at the hot tub. This is a huge campsite and there are two pools. There is the east side and the west side. This particular side is the west side. It is um, closed down for the winter. We're here in um, December. This is a splash pad for the kiddos, which is pretty cool. And then um, the pool here is huge um, with a little walk down kind of sand ramp. It will be reopened on Memorial Day for the summer. So it adds putt putt area. This is the old country store. They have um, redone the country store, and I'll show you that to you in just a moment. I'm not sure what they're going to do with this building when it's done. On the other side of this corner is a second laundry facility. So in front of the old country store, is another building where the second lodge is located as well as a snack shack that is still being remodeled on the inside and this lodge room is uh, open but it's not as remodeled here is the snack shack that is closed right now it looks like they're using it for storage but it's going to be remodeled as well Head into the North Pole. They are ready for Christmas, although you won't see this probably until the end of winter, maybe even up into spring. Wow. This lodge is huge. I'm taking it, this will be where the DJ plays this weekend. I wish we were going to be here. But we are headed out to Wilderness Lakes. You can check out the uh, miniature golf stuff and games right there. And check out movies as well. This is our first time of seeing a vacuum cleaner uh, with an air hose at a thousand trails or any campsite. If you've seen this before, put it in the comments below and let us know where. We are in Acton, California at Solidad Canyon Thousand Trails. 
trails. Since this park is so big, there are several locations for bathhouses for your convenience. This is the tent section. You can see the cute sign on the tree. So this is Bonanza section. Fred and I have been driving around and realized this is about the only place that has a name. We do believe this is B section, definitely B section. And there are um, several 50 amps. If you're looking for a 50 amp full hookup site here, we chose in section um, because it has 30 amps and we're fine with 30 or 50 and it does get better um, cellular or Wi-Fi connections. Fred and I came down this way our first night, right? And we thought the places were just a little bit tight. tight. So we decided to go up on end section. There are also interlinks. Very confusing. And we came down this road and obviously in the road you want to come down, this way you want to come down the other way. And you can uh, some of the empty spots have cars parked in them. Although not so much today. There's a spot right there. Mm -hmm. Like our spot. Well, it's got a red box. Yeah. Never mind. And we'll show you some of those red boxes. Oh, that's why the van's parked there. It's a red box too. This must be not using any electricity at all. And there's another bathroom. Yeah, I don't know if we caught that on video, but we'll see. You did, it's okay. Yeah, let's go back through. Red box site. The nice thing about red box sites is, if you park next to one, you don't have any neat for steak. Another red box site. But if you look, some of these red box sites must have been fixed because now they have numbers on them and they didn't change the colors. But not all sites that aren't red boxed have power. We learned that one the hard way. So take me to the air conditioning, Mommy. Hey, baby. Bella. Hi, Bella. Hi, little girl. Hi, little girl. Is you pretty? He's your pretty. Oh, I had to pay attention to the puppy. <laughs> so normally case spot is blocked off with picnic tables, but someone moved it to get in there. Apparently Fred read it online <laughs> and they have a sign here that they're fixing up case site and uh, it is under construction for uh, electrical, hopefully 50 amps. Must be a pretty big storm flood up here, I'm sure. So the section of road can become flooded and impassable during storms. It's a cool little bridge. Right now it's pretty dry. So I think it's pretty cool at night because I do walk a lot. Sometimes after dark, these rocks um, on the bridge have solar lights that shine onto the road. So beware in this area of coyotes, hawks, and owls. And watch for the small pets. I'm surprised in this whole big park um, we've ventured around and there's lots of things to do but this is the only playground that we have seen and it's found what by the getaway cabins which are also have some uh, sites as well and of course as you can see the Q restroom so this must be Q site dump station and solely dad. Our side is Soledad. As you can see, we have a really big front yard, but it's simply because um, uh, the electrical unit over here is not working. Most of them are painted red if they're not working, but beware, all of them are not. And uh, <laughs> we are at a shared pedestal at number 162 on the end section. And Fred's going to talk to you in just a minute a little bit about our electrical system during our stay here. So we pull into the site. We've got 30 amps to be expected. Only a few 50 amp sites here. They're all down in section B and they were pretty busy. So you got your 30 amps. 
Although his his circuit breakers are 40 amps, if you can see that. And their air conditioner has been running all day. You can probably hear it. And we're plugged into here, 30 amp. And then originally into this 30 amp adapter was plugged in there. So we got the power watchdog. At night we were watching the voltage meters in the uh, in the main GFI outlets. And when the voltage drops below 104 volts, right, uh, the watchdog and the EMS system inside they'll shut down to protect the uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, all that. So. So that wasn't working. So it, it shut off three or four times during the night and I could watch it actually go down. So we had this on the old coach, which was a 30 amp coach. This is a Hughes auto former. Plugs into 30 amps, right? Has 30 amps on, coming out of it. And then it, if the voltage drops, what it'll do is it'll steal some amps, basically, because you can't make anything. So it'll steal, steal some amps and give you more voltage. So you might not be running 30 amps anymore, but you're going to be running 120 volts. Right now she's running about 123 in there, but we're not pulling any real power. So at night it'll drop down to about 116 when we start running the heat pumps. So, and uh, I was going to get rid of this, but I thought I'd keep it. When we went to 50 amp with this coach, I thought about getting one that's 50 amp, but honestly, most 50 amp circuits are pretty new and they're in pretty good shape. And we haven't had any problem with any 50 amp circuits. Although some, one leg will be off or something like that. And this ain't gonna fix that. So I went ahead and kept it because they're not cheap, they're about $500. And uh, so we've been doing this for, for a year with this coach. And this is the first time I had to pull it out. But I'm glad I had it. Thing weighs a ton, right? It's also made by Hughes, which makes the uh, Power Watchdog. And I think it's a good combination to have. Again, you're not going to use this every day, every weekend, anything like that. And a very special case. But when you're out here and it goes down to 50 degrees at night, you're going to want to have something to be able to you know, pump it up and get those uh, heat pumps back on or air conditioners or whatever. And this is doing a real good job. We have to, because we're on 30, we of course have to watch our usage a little more closely. And uh, the watchdog makes that easy to do with its GPS function, so that's it. Today I have brought you out with me to Malibu Creek State Park. I'm super stoked about this and I'll tell you why in just a few. Um, at the California State Parks there is a camping and day use fee area that you pay and you can use cash or card, either one. If you don't have exact change then they um, and then they ask you to pay with the card. But I wanted to give you just um, what the rates are here for camping fees. And you do also pay for your camping fees at the little kiosk. You can also pay by phone for your day pass in California State Parks. They do have bathrooms for your convenience and lots of picnic space. So it is about a 2.5 mile hike in and out. There are no dogs beyond this point on the State Park Trail. There are a lot of trails at Malibu Creek State Park, but there is one in particular that I am so excited about. The reason I'm super stoked is I am a huge fan of MASH and have seen almost every episode. We are on what is known as Craig's Road. Um, this will take you up to the Visitor Center, Century Lake, to the MASH site where I am so excited, and Reagan Ranch. So this road um, used to be used by cars, still is used by the Ranger trucks. Um, so it's a very pretty easy trail. Um, so far anyways, I'll let you know if it gets any harder. Check out these views. I can see why um, they use this for filming a mash. I mean, it's a great location. Great scenery. Um, and looks very realistic to what they were going for. We are looking at the site of where Planet of the Apes 
was filmed. Before this became Malibu Creek State Park, it was 20th Century Fox Ranch. And the first scenes of the 1968 movie were filmed in Arizona, but once you get to the part where the falls um, were shown, then um, the rest of it was filmed here, where Ape City was about the length of the football field down through here. And I'm going to move the camera over just a little bit so you can see Craig's, um, Craig's uh, road. This is where we've been uh, hiking. And this was also known as the hiking trail on the Planet of Ape. So if you look at Craig's road, you see that. Then I'm going to show you closer. This is the same road, our hiking trail. Let's see if I can get out of the, the sun a little bit that you see here with the apes. <clears throat> Across from the Planet Apes um, sign, if you want to take a break because it was a climb up the hill, it's pretty hot. There is a cool body of water, they call it a lake there, and a pretty damn nice picnic area. And it pretty much dead ends there, it's not very far. And um, then you just come back up to the Craig's Road, and it's about two tenths of a mile to the lake. Um, and then, if you just want to continue on, continue straight Craig's Road to Forest Trail. Should I take the low road or should I take the high road? Put in the comments section below which way do you think I went? I don't know if you can see, uh, but of course. The two roads ran parallel, but you know what? I think it's fun to take the high road. That's the way I like to go. Once you come to this portion where there's like a little bridge or a, I'll say it's a bridge. This is still your way on Craig's Road to MASH site. But once you cross this bridge, your nice wide road is going to narrow in um, to a pretty regular hiking path. Pretty cool. Fred will be waiting for the helicopter to come in or lift off. The road sure did narrow a little bit. That's okay. I'd rather uh, be on a little smaller trail. Makes me feel a little bit more one with nature. We have made it to 20th Century Fox Ranch site where they filmed MASH. Of course, also known as Malibu Creek State Park. Now. <clears throat> so here is one of the props that they used. Pretty cool, huh? The 4077. inside. <clears throat> Restored with pride by the Southern California Military Vehicle Collectors Club, Dan McCluskey, President, November 2020. They did a great job. Have steps so you can climb in there. <clears throat> Pretty sad. They have to lock her down. There you go, Fred. There is your old helicopter pad, the heli launch. But no copters here today. So, welcome to the historic filming side of TV's legendary MASH. As far left is the mess hall tent, and then to the far right, there would have been showers. 
So most of the filming did take place on a soundstage, but all of the large exterior scenes that you've seen and the um, vehicle driving around, the helicopters, and the occasional tank coming in um, were done right here. You can uh, bring a lunch with your family or on your own if you want and eat right here in the same location that your favorite actors and actresses. Alright, interesting. They have your smartphone camera holder. Get everyone in the photo. Use your self timer and you can snap your very own shot of the famous sign. Looks like it's been definitely restored. Boston, Seoul, Coney Island, San Francisco, Tokyo, Burbank, Death Valley, Toledo. So we actually really love MASH and if you check out our Toledo scene, we went to the Jamie Farr Park and also ate at um, the restaurant Tony Paco's, which was made famous by being uh, mentioned on this set in a couple of the uh, episodes. Check that video out. We'll put it in the description below. So they talk about why MASH um, set was not restored to all the buildings that you see on TV, but um, they say that it would be very cramped here because the way that they do setting, um, they really couldn't put up the whole um, camp in this area. Definitely worth the hike. If you love MASH, I think you would enjoy this. All right, it's time for your Soledad Canyon cellular service report. Well, AT&T leads the pack this time around at 51.9 download speed. We've got T-Mobile coming in second at 30.8 and poor Verizon only coming in at 2.19. 